So here's a cob recovered from the Spanish uh, 1715 fleet, and I wanted to make a video just to kind of show how you clean these coins. There's a few different ways I guess you can do it, but the safest way to do it is with electrolysis. That's the way I always clean salvaged coins. And this one is a four real, so it looks like it's going to be Mexico, probably, uh, you can see a little bit of the shield here, so probably neat new style. Can't be 100% certain because you can't see it. It's pretty beat up, so... Uh, that's why I'm cleaning this one with 1715 fleet. I actually like to leave them uh, like this where they're as found just encrusted. So I don't know. I figured I'd do this one and we'll see what we get because I'm going to put this in a frame and give this one to my nephew. So anyway, let's take a look at what we're going to need to clean this coin. You're going to need something like this, just a jar. It could be Tupperware, but I would go with something clear. Don't use metal. Um, but yeah, you know, it can be glass, it can be plastic. Just make sure it's clear. It could be a cup, it doesn't really matter. Just something that you can see um, what's going on inside of the container. You're going to need a power source, and for that I use a, I believe it's like 6 volt. No, this one is, what, 9 volt? Let me take a closer look here. 6 volt, yeah, 6 volt. So it's a 6 volt. This is a um, old cell phone charger, and this works perfect. So you take one of these, you go to the very end, you cut the end off, and we're going to replace that with um, alligator clips like this. And for our anode, we're going to need stainless steel. So I have a stainless steel spoon here, and um, this will be our anode. This is going to go into... The solution in the jar and on the other alligator clip we will connect our cob and we'll clean it so I'll show you what we're gonna do to make our solution it's actually very simple all right for the solution it's just salt that's it I'm gonna just dump some of that in there this is the salt that I always use for this it's a little bit clumped up it seems like it's not a lot of chlorine but yeah, it's like we need to break it up um, basically making saline solution. That's really all this is. Maybe we can cut this open. Let me cut this open and we'll get more in there. Alright, there we go. So I put quite a bit in. It's because we're going to fill this with water. Um, and normally I would say to use a... I would use um, distilled water for this. I don't have any distilled water so I'm just going to use regular tap water. Let's fill it up like that. Uh, we could fill it up a little bit more. We want it to be about right there. I don't know. So 25 uh, to 75, I would say, would be about the, the good mixture between the salt and water. And then we'll just take our anode here and we'll use that to kind of stir the salt. Now the next thing I always add is a little bit of lime juice. I'm not sure if I have any. I'll look real quick and if I do I'll put it in. If not then I don't have it. But I would recommend putting in like a few good squirts of the bottled lime juice. I don't know why but it helps. Alright, I don't have lime juice so we're just going to have to skip it. Um, anyway, have that connected. The power is now running. It's not a strong current so it doesn't send any kind of um, shock. So this is kind of hard to do with uh, one hand here, but I'm going to see if I can't hook this on. This alligator clip's pretty old, so it doesn't want to close. There, yeah, see, it's pretty busted up. Let me do this with, with a free hand. All right, now for this step, you do not want the anode and the coin to touch at all. So what we're going to do is take the coin and just go ahead and place it into the solution. And the thing that we're going to watch for, and it just fell off, this alligator clip is so old that um, it doesn't want to clip on. So luckily I've got new ones. I try not to use them because they actually corrode pretty quickly. So make sure if you're going to be doing a number of coins, like when I do the Nintuna Rec coins, 
even the uh, Muzu River Horde coins, I have to have a number of these alligator clips because of how quickly they corrode. All right, now this is it. This is the point of no return. Um, once this goes in, it is going to start to clean. Um, so make sure you really want to do this. Like I said, I don't normally do this with my 1715 Fleet and Crusted Cobs, but I'm going to do it this time because this one, like I said, is going to be a gift. And I think um, that my nephew would just like this quite a bit more if it was actually a visible coin versus just a little black cookie like this. So The thing that we want to watch for now is the coin needs to be bubbling. I want to try to zoom in here. Once the reaction starts taking place, you're going to see bubbles start coming off this coin and they're going to start coming up. And you'll know if you have this going backwards because the spoon will start bubbling. So we want to make sure that we have the right side bubbling. Sometimes it takes a minute and if it's not going, you can always add a little bit more salt to kind of help this reaction go, but I can see it bubbling now. So we're all good. So it's already starting. Um, I can actually hear it too, so sounds pretty good. And if we watch, you'll start to see all this encrusted silver sulfite, sand, and other gunk start to fall off the coin. And it can take a little while. It can take, I don't know, five minutes. It can take an hour. It can take a day, depending on how encrusted the coin is. This one shouldn't take very long, given that it's not a very big coin. Uh, it's fairly thin. Like I said, we do not see all this coming off right now. That's sulfur. That is uh, 300 plus years of sulfur on this coin. And that shit stinks. I kid you not. It smells like, I mean, uh, if you've ever driven by like a paper mill, it's like that and somebody farted in the car. It's horrible. So as this is happening, we can see the coin's still black. But what we're going to do is after, I don't know, about a minute, I'm going to check the coin and run it under some tap water and just rub it a little bit and see how loose this crap is getting. And that's kind of how we gauge how far we need to clean the coin. We're not going to use anything that's heavily abrasive. Uh, the only thing that I would recommend using is a green scrubby, and very lightly at that, because um, we don't want to leave marks on the actual coin itself. So let me give this a minute here, and um, we'll see how it, how it goes. I'll turn this back on in a moment. Um, actually, just want to note real quick, too, that this coin was recovered, um, I think, in the 19... 80s if I remember so this coin has actually been like this since it was recovered so it's kind of I feel kind of weird actually cleaning it now that I think about it um, <laughs> but I'm doing it so yeah um, this is how it's done you know with with most salvage companies with these coins is, is by electrolysis it really is the safest way to go now if you have a coin that's really heavily encrusted and I mean like really really badly um, one way you can do it is by heating the coin up and throwing it into a thing of water like this and what will happen is is the crystals in the silver coin itself are going to expand and and contract and when it hits the water the metal changes size ever so or just so quickly that all that crust will kind of kick off and it can either all kick off at once or it can take a few times so the very first cob i ever found when i was 10 years old the way we cleaned that coin was by putting it on a log in the fire and he threw it into a bucket of water my grandfather did and that's how we cleaned that coin obviously there's better ways now so this is how i do it but um Nothing large scale, but I just wanted to show anybody that finds, you know, like an encrusted coin on a beach. If you get lucky and you find a coin, um, sorry, if you, if you find a coin on the Treasure Coast or any number of shipwreck sites, this is how you can clean it. It's, re it's really, really simple. Um, again, it's just a 6-volt charger for a phone, 
couple alligator clips, and you want to have a stainless steel anode. So I just use a spoon or, you know, any stainless steel utensil. You can find them at like a Goodwill for, for 50 cents. And this jar I think I even got at a Goodwill. So, yeah, minimal expense, um, very easy to do. And if you have a coin, you know, that's that's clearly a high-grade coin, it's, it's often worth it to clean it because you get some nice coins out of those pieces, especially when they're in clumps that have been broken up. Okay, we're going to check this. Let me pause it so we can have a look real quick. All right, I haven't looked at it just yet, but I have the water running, so what we're going to do is just start to run it into this water and kind of rub it a little bit, start to expose some of these coins. So however long I was talking just a second ago was how long this was in there. You can already see that this coin took quite a bit of damage. I can see it looks like it is a neat new style, though. Um, so what I'm going to do, since I can't do this, with just the one hand. Well, maybe I can. Let me get this scrubby wet here. Just rub it on this pad, just ever so gently. And yeah, there's some detail coming out now. Let me turn this faucet off so you can actually hear what I'm saying. Let's see if I was right. Do we have a neat new style or do we have an OSB? This actually might be an OSB. It's really hard to tell. I think it's an OSB. I think it's a little bit. No, it's no, it's not. It's a neat new style. It's four reals. Looks like it's a seventeen fourteen. There's no date, but the uh, Florida Lee are long, so at least what I can see through the phone. I'm kind of using the phone as a as a uh, magnifier. This side really is pretty much shot. It's pretty heavy pieces of crust here. Anyway, well, let's um, do this and give it one more run. And one thing I want to note is if you overclean these and get them too silvery, if they're too polished, you can actually reverse the alligator clips on your anode so it runs the uh, silver, or sorry, not the silver, but the sulfur back to the coin, and it will actually tone the coin back up for you a little bit. So it's, that's one way you can actually retone a coin that has been um, overly cleaned. Anyway, I'm going to go back and put it in just a little bit longer. Well, the coin that I'm doing, to me, looks pretty toasted. It doesn't really look like there's much to it. So I thought I'd take a look at a few other encrusted 1715 fleet coins I have. Uh, here's an 8 real. This one's pretty heavily encrusted there. Still, even if it's clean, it's not going to be that great of a coin. But you never know what's under it. I can see a bit of a cross on this one. I'm tempted to do another one because like, I really want... Uh, one with a cross, some cross features here is a nice four reals. Pretty heavy. And looks like a two real. I'm not sure if this is Mexico or uh, Potosi or even Lima, actually. I have a feeling, though, that this one might not have much feature, though it's pretty, pretty hefty for what it is. So let's pull this guy out and have a look again real quick. You can see that we're really starting to see the coin itself. Silver sulfide on it, man. It's just gnarly. I'm turn it around so it's facing our anode, so I can kind of direct that current right there at the obverse. Anyway, this is how you uh, clean an encrusted coin. I hope that um, you learned something. I'm pretty tired right now, so not a lot of energy, but. Um, yeah, this is how you do it, and I guess if you got any questions about it, you can leave, a leave it down in the comments, and I'll try to answer it. All right, guys, well, um, as usual, happy hunting, happy collecting, and I uh, hope you learned something. Cheers.